Here we'll discuss the divisibility of integers. We say an integer a divides an integer b if they have another integer c such that b is equal to ac. And this is the standard way we think about divisibility, maybe just worded slightly differently. We say a number divides another number if we can divide it evenly with no remainder. And if we can say that a divides b, we're gonna denote it by this vertical bar in the middle. We'll look at a few examples, and here I just wanna see if these things are true or false. The first one, does five divide nine? So what I'm asking here is, is there an integer that I can multiply five by this integer x equal to nine? And we can definitely say no. For the second one, is 15 times a number equal to five? Well, once again, no. I could multiply 15 by one third, but we do want integers here. However, the last one is yes, since five times three is equal to 15. Therefore, all I'm looking to see is if the first number divides evenly into the second number. We do have a few properties of this division, so we'll give these by first assuming that a, b, and c are integers. The first one, if a divides b and a divides c, then a divides b plus c. And we will give a brief proof of this. The first thing, if a divides b, means that there is some number that we'll call k, such that a k is equal to b. If a divides c, there's some number, which we'll say is l, such that a l is equal to c. Therefore, I can do a times the integer k plus l, which would give me a k plus a l, which is b plus c. Therefore, a does divide b plus c. The second one, if a divides b, then a divides b times c. This is just saying that I can multiply b by any integer, and we still have divisibility. If a divides b, then there's some number, which we'll call k, such that a k is equal to b by the definition of divisibility. Well then, I can multiply both sides by c, and now I have an integer times a, which is equal to b times c, which is what we needed. Therefore, we can multiply the number on the right by any integer. Our final property, which is known as transitivity, if a divides b and b divides c, then a divides c. Since we know a divides b, we know there's, there's integer k, such that a k is equal to b. Since we know b divides c, we know there's this integer l, such that b l is equal to c. Now all I do is I take the second equation and replace that b with what I know b is, the a k. Now I have this integer times a, which is equal to c, therefore a divides c. The next thing we'll look at is known as the division algorithm. To give this, we start with an integer a, and a positive integer d. Then we have unique integers, q and r, such that a is equal to dq plus r, where r is greater than or equal to zero and less than d. Typically when we divide, we have a quotient and a remainder, and that's exactly what q and r represent here. q is the quotient when we do a divided by d, and r is the remainder when we do a divided by d. And we do have some notation to represent this. We say q is equal to a div d and then r is equal to a mod d. So d represents the division and the quotient, mod represents the remainder from when you divide. We'll do an example, 103 div 12 and 103 mod 12. 
The first one wants to know how many times can 12 go into 103? Well, we know that 12 times 8 is 96, so therefore it's equal to 8. 103 mod 12 would then be the remainder. Well, we've already dealt with 96, so subtracting that leaves us with 7. So 103 div 12 is 8, 103 mod 12 is 7. Next, negative 65 did 3 and negative 65 mod 3. The negatives tend to confuse people up and cause problems. When you divide negative 65 divided by 3 and you just do a regular division, you get negative 21.66666 forever. Therefore, a lot of people want to say that negative 65 div 3 is negative 21. And then our question is, what is the remainder? Well, our division algorithm said that we needed negative 65 is equal to our quotient times what we're dividing by plus our remainder. Well, this is now negative 65 is equal to negative 63 plus r, and solving gives r is equal to negative 2. However, this causes a problem because the remainder strictly had to be greater than 0. So this can't work. And in fact, it doesn't. The actual quotient here is negative 22. When we use division and we try to take a decimal and figure out what the quotient should be, we actually have to use the floor function, which says we need to go down to the next integer, which would be, in this case, negative 22. In that case, we can modify this equation to find the remainder. Negative 22 times 3 is negative 66, and solving would give a remainder of 1.